Welcome to Prepare to Survive, Pinellas County's E-Series presentation on disaster preparedness. I'm your host, Tom Iovino of the Pinellas County Communications Department. For the next 15 minutes, we'll take a look at a program that helps residents with special medical needs evacuate and find shelter should a storm threaten the area. Joining us today is Amber Bolding, a special needs shelter coordinator for the Pinellas County Health Department. Welcome, Amber. How are you doing today? Yeah, thanks for having me, Tom. Well, thank you for coming on out. Amber, what is the special needs evacuation program? Talk to us a little bit about this. Well, in Pinellas County, we understand, you know, we have a very unique situation um, for our residents. You know, we, um, we're a... Um, Peninsula on a peninsula, okay. you know, so you know, we have a very high probability of flooding, you know, so our, our We have to take care of our um, Residents um, and in Pinellas County. We tend to have an older uh, demographic of residents We tend to have seasonal residents come in and out um, and with these things It's very important that we, we take care of our folks, okay. you know, especially during you know hurricane season, you know, like I said, we're you know, right on the water, lots of water around. Um, so we need to take care of our, especially our special need folks um, when it comes time to. Now, what, what, what is a special need? I mean, talk, talk to me a little bit about what some of these special needs okay, are. Okay, well, so our special needs, these are people who live independently in the community. So not necessarily in a nursing home or hospital care, but people who live independently in the community who just need assistance. So whether they're on oxygen, uh, meals and wheel pr meals program, they're electrically dependent, such as CPAP or BiPAP machines, um, need assistance with medications and just routine medical care, but for the most part can can function independently themselves. Okay, so these are people who live on their own but need some additional assistance. Maybe they're oxygen dependent or something along right, those lines. Right, exactly. Now, now, what is the program all about? I mean, talk to me a little bit about the evacuation part of the program. There's two parts. There's evacuations and shelters. But the evacuation part of the program, what, what, what's involved in that? Well, once an evacuation is called, um, some of our special needs folks, they might not have transportation okay. you know, to get where they need to go. So part of our special needs um, evacuation program is making sure that um, those folks um, we, we get that transportation set for them ahead of time so we can get them to the shelters um, where they need to be. Um, we work with the fire department, so when they register for special needs, they mark whether um, they need transportation or not, and the fire department actually contacts them um, to kind of assess the situation and see what kind of transportation they need. So we work out ahead of time um, how they're going to get to the shelter and to ensure they get to the shelter. Because um, especially for special needs folks, you know, being in a hurricane situation is stressful enough, but being in a hurricane situation and being wheelchair bound or, you know, just not very mobile, it's an even more stressful situation. So our program really helps to alleviate some of that stress and make sure that our um, our residents can really take care of themselves and really prepare ahead of time for the storm. So the last thing we want to do is wait till last minute. Yeah, and, that, and that's a critical thing. You were talking about people getting registered in advance. I mean, we can't obviously wait until the last minute for people to come and sign up, obviously. Absolutely, especially when it comes to making sure we have transportation taken care of ahead of time for residents. You know, when we get those phone calls several, you know, within several hours before the storm saying, I can't get to my shelter, what do I do? It gets really difficult when you have a, you know, a big stream of calls coming in, you know, that short notice. We wanna make sure our residents are prepared ahead of time, that we're prepared ahead of time um, to make sure that that transportation gets handled so that we can get them there safely. Now, Amber, you know, there's a lot of questions we get uh, from people who are interested in participating in the program. Mm -hmm. And one of them is how much does it cost to get on? And, and, and I think you have some good news for our residents. Yes, the great news is it's absolutely free. Um, to register for the special needs shelters, no cost to come to our shelters, um, obviously no cost. And the transportation, it's, it's provided by the fire department um, or the PSTA does free transit during evacuations. Um, they run their normal routes all the way up until, you know, weather gets too bad that they can't safely run those routes. And they also run the routes from um, transit points into the shelter um, until weather gets you know, deteriorates too much where they can't. But it's it's all completely free, even on the bus systems. Yeah, we don't want to leave anybody behind because they don't think they have exact change or anything along Absolutely. those lines. Absolutely, so that's not, that should not be an issue. Now let me ask you something. You know, yeah. you talk about people who have these uh, medical needs. Um, what if, for instance, you know, say I'm, uh, I'm uh, one year during hurricane season, I break my leg okay. and I can't get around. Can I sign up for the, to Absolutely. be on the list? Absolutely, Absolutely. If you register and you sign up, well, let me back up. Okay. Just for a broken leg, 
and you're still somewhat mobile, you might be all right in a general shelter. Okay. If you need assistance with your broken leg, if you happen to be, you know, whether it's temporarily in a wheelchair, permanently in a wheelchair, and you need assistance kind of getting up, getting down, getting to the restroom, you know, whatever that might be, then absolutely you're, that meets criteria to come into a shelter. Um, and if next year the leg's all healed, I can take myself off the yeah, list. Absolutely. Oh, okay. and, and we ask you, to, you know, to do that because that way we can pre-plan. Um, and if you're able to provide your own transportation into that shelter as well, um, that's, that's an option. You don't have to use transportation. Okay. Us. So now we've talked about the transportation component. We've got that mm -hmm. over there, people who uh, may have some difficulty getting around. The special needs shelter themselves. Tell, tell me a little bit about this program. Okay, well the special needs shelter program, we worked really hard on this at the health department. Um, we staff the shelters with all of our health department staff as well as some of the school staff. So we have nurses on site. Um, we try to have at least one doctor or ARNP on site. But it's important to understand that the majority of our staff are support staff. Um, for this reason, it's really important for um, the residents to know that we don't operate as a hospital or an urgent care center. And that's a critical thing very, to know. Very, very critical. Um, if you require care um, to the standard of a hospital or a nursing home or um, a skilled nursing facility, you're probably you're probably not set for a special needs shelter. We need to work out something else for you, but we can do that. Um, so when you register for a special needs shelter and you go through the medical questionnaire, us at the health department will review that and determine your eligibility. If we find that um, your care exceeds what we can do at the health department, then we work with emergency management, the fire department, to make sure we find out the best place for that person to go. Okay. Um, so it's not that you're going to get a declination letter and say, sorry, you know, we you're can't on your take own. We you. don't want to jump. No, no, no. we're going to gonna take care of you. Um, and again, it will be at no cost to the person. Even if we decide that you need um, to go to a nursing home during um, the hurricane as an evacuation option, you're still okay. We're, you're not going to get a you know, fat bill in the mail or anything. Um, but again, special needs shelters, people who live independently in the community, they need you know um, help with medication or just routine medical um, services. Or if they're on oxygen, mm -hmm. you know we will have oxygen at the shelters. Um, now, inside these special needs shelters, I understand, first of all, there are three of them. In three Pinellas of them, County. yes. North Central and South County. Okay. Now, can just anybody show up at a special needs shelter, or is it just the person who with the special needs, or can they bring a caregiver with them? We really, really encourage everyone to bring caregiver and families with them. Okay. Um, you know, um, once you register, it's not mandatory that you register. Um, if you want transportation, you need to register because we won't know that you need transportation if we don't have that registration form. Um, it's not mandatory you register if you don't need transportation, but it's highly, highly recommended. That way we can kind of assess um, how many people to expect in our shelter. We can um, assess how many staffing we need ahead of time, how many uh, medical staff, how many support staff, um, if we need to get more cots or wheelchairs, that sort of thing. So we definitely recommend um, register ahead of time. But we will have a medical triage set up on site. So when people come in, um, if they're registered, we'll pull up the registration form, go through the registration, make sure everything's great, and then, you know, go make yourself comfortable. Um, if people come in and they're not registered, they're going to go through that same process. They're going to go through a quick little medical questionnaire. Mm -hmm. If the nurse in medical triage thinks that, you know, yes, they are suitable for special needs, then we'll go ahead and admit them in. If, um, say, they're more suited for a general shelter, then we'll make arrangements to get them to a general shelter, or if they come in on an ambulance and they're on a ventilator, then chances are their needs exceed what we can provide, so we're gonna work and get them to their hospital or nursing home. Um, on the flip side of that, if they come in right on top of the storm, we know we have to be flexible. Of course. Um, we're not gonna send anybody out in inclement weather because we don't think we can provide for them. But it's just important to know that at best, we're basic life support. Okay, you know. so basically a little bit more advanced than what you'd see in a general exactly. shelter, but not quite to the level of a hospital. Exactly, and the biggest difference between a, um, a general shelter and a special needs shelter is our redundant power. So if electricity does go out, we do have a backup generator, um, which is why it's important for people who are electrically dependent or on oxygen, they can um, get to us. So because includes, we will keep power. So that includes anybody with an oxygen gen, uh, concentrator or, or something along Absolutely. those lines. What about people who are dialysis patients? Things along the, Do they qualify for special yes, needs? Yes, yes. We will even have um, dialysis centers. Those employees will be at our special needs center. Um, but we need to know 
ahead of time certain information. So we really need dialysis patients to register ahead of time and let us know um, which dialysis center they go to and how often they're dia dialysized. Because okay. um, that'll help our, our, pro our um, staff know um, how soon to get them back to those centers. Now when people sign up for the special needs, mm -hmm. either evacuation assistance or the shelter, um, how do they know they're still on the list every year? Um, you can always call your local fire department or emergency management or even us at the health department and we can take a look at it. But yearly there, the fire department calls their special needs shelter um, clients just to double check their information. Um, and you know, make sure that the, the issues they had last year are the same as this year and if anything's changed. Okay, so basically it's an ongoing list to make mm -hmm. sure that the list is all there if they still need the assistance or if they don't. I, absolutely. Okay, all right. Now, when, when, um, when we're talking about people um, who've got the special needs issues, um, it, it really is critical, again, I wanna, I wanna hit on this point again, that they register well in advance. Yes, yes, and especially, you know, when we see that storm out there and we're in the five day cone, a lot of us start, you know, wait to that point to get ready. Because until then, it's not really, you know, in your mind, we become complacent. Um, so we really want to avoid waiting to last minute to make those preparations because when you have a large group of people that do that, it, it really puts a lot of stress on the system. Um, and it doesn't matter what time of the year. I mean, if you decide in, in, in April your situation warrants it, you can call oh, in absolutely. April or January or you whatever. You can decide in December that, you know, you know if you know you're gonna have issues you know, or whatever the situation is, you can register any time of the year. It's not, you okay, know, so only it's not just the, during the, the approach of a right, hurricane or something right, along those we, lines. Right, and we would we would prefer, you know, when when a special need arises and you know that if if any disaster were to occur, that you would need special need assistance, go ahead and and um, register, because that way we can go in and get you processed and get you, you know, situated well before you know, anything might occur. Now, I understand that this is a law in the state of Florida that each of the counties has to provide this kind of service, yes. but in other states, it's not necessary in the law. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've heard stories about, especially after Hurricane Katrina, what happened in Louisiana and Mississippi. Do you think that uh, having this law in the books really does make a difference in, in the outcome of what happens? I absolutely do. You know, in Florida, it's mandated, you know, that we, we staff these shelters. Um, and that kind of, it just, it creates um, kind of a, can't think of the word. Um, it allows our staff to know that it's part of their job to do this. Okay. Um, and so, you know, people, we take pride in our jobs. So special needs shelter, you know, when people come in, you know, they know what's expected of them and we can train ahead of time. So that's great. It allows us to, to really treat our clients better and um, be there for them. Um, in other states, they have to rely on volunteers. And mm -hmm. volunteers are fantastic. And we, we rely on volunteers as well. But, you know, the, the bad thing about that situation is when push comes to shove, volunteers can say no, you know. Exactly. You know, I got to take care of me first. And, you know, and it's and understandable. We it's understand definitely that. Their, their families, obviously. Absolutely. Are being, being we understand concerned. that. Um, and that's why, with, with our staff, you know, and it's mandated, you know, we work on preparedness. I mean, that's, that's key with our staff. You know, we, we don't let our staff wait till last minute for things either. You know, f most important is family preparedness. If you don't have that family preparedness plan and know what you're doing, um, then we can't adequately treat our clients. And that's what we're here to do. And that's the most critical that's thing, the that most, preparedness. That's the most critical thing. Amber, we've got about a minute. Okay. What else do you want to tell our viewers? Anything else you want to cover? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, the biggest thing is remember special needs shelters, register early, um, and, and make sure that it's last resort for you. You know, we're here to provide for you. We're here to make sure you're safe. But if you have other options, whether it's non-evacuation zones or family or um, friends. Or who, even leaving the area. Or totally. leaving the area. If you have that option, we, you know, we encourage you to do so. Okay. Um, we, we say that special needs shelters are, they're not a cruise ship, they're a lifeboat. That's a very key, yep. important point to remember as we go through hurricane season That's and the rest it. of the year. Amber, I cannot thank, thank you, you enough for coming on. This is some really valuable information. I'm definitely happy to see you came on Prepare to Survive today. Thanks, to Tom. I appreciate it. If you'd like to see a repeat of this presentation, visit www.pinellascounty.org slash e-series. If you'd like more information on how to prepare for hurricanes or other potential disasters, visit the Pinellas County Emergency management homepage at www.pinellascounty.org slash emergency. And if you have any questions about today's topic, be sure to email them to ema at pinellascounty.org and we will get back to you. Join us again for the next Prepare to Survive e-series. Stay safe.